Ladies and gentlemen, episode 10 has come and gone, and that is it for the Last Dance documentary, man. All 10 episodes have, are finished, all 10 episodes have been played, and after this episode, all 10 episodes have been reviewed. So without further ado, man, let's jump into it, the final episode. Let's go. What's up everybody, it's the Sports Code aka Aiden and welcome back to another video. This is the final part, episode 10 of the Michael Jordan documentary series, The Last Dance. Now, of course, um, being the last episode, we're finally going to come to a conclusion to all of these um, events all from the 98 season. We're going to figure out everything, what happened in these moments. And it's, it's a thriller, man. This documentary has been insane. And now it's time to finish it off with a bang. So without further ado, please like and subscribe to the Sports Co. YouTube channel. Turn the notifications on and share the playlist. Share the video. Share the series. Go watch the Last Dance documentary. This is the last time I'm probably ever going to say it because the review is coming to an end. But please, everything that I say, everything that any other YouTuber, ESPN um, analysts, all of them, what they say... It's only a smear of what you actually get in the documentary. It's been a heck of a documentary. And the only way to digest the emotions, the passions that these players go through, um, the aggression and the character that Michael Jordan goes through is to watch it yourself, man. I highly recommend if no one, if you don't have access to it, to find access to it by any means, go and watch this documentary. You will not regret it. Without further ado, man, let's jump into it. So. This goes more into the, uh, of course, the NBA Finals because this is 98 season NBA Finals between the Utah Jazz who are back and they're better than ever and they're ready to take down the Bulls and they're ready to take down Michael Jordan. But can they do it, man? Um, it, it's been a long, tough road for Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls with all of the media saying that this is their last dance. Um, Phil Jackson's going to get released. Michael Jordan potentially retiring and all of these uh, events that are happening and it's it's insane to think about because we like how could a team really like this is just it's not really based on the review but how can a team really go out really focus on the task at hand when they know that the year after nobody's going to be there anymore that's uh, to, that's crazy to me but anyway, um, it, it starts off with the, the Utah Jazz, basically. They're hyping up the Utah Jazz as um, back and better than ever. They also talk about Michael Jordan's kids. Michael Jordan's kids actually gave some interviews here, saying that when they were young, they weren't allowed to go to Utah because Utah was a, such a hostile place, such a negative place for Bulls players and obviously Michael Jordan, that their kids could potentially get abused while going to those games, which is fairly interesting, to be honest, because... You don't see much about Michael Jordan's kids in this documentary, not as much as they probably should be. But w when you think about it, yeah, like just imagine if a little kid, if little kids were at that at that game one in, in Utah, and they were they were getting abused by adults because they're just kids of of the greatest of all time. That would have been demoralizing for a little kid. So yeah. It's good to see that um, there was some action taken against them going to Utah. Um, and yeah, they ended up going with the uh, Bulls. Uh, Jazz winning game one and then Bulls tying it up. And then Bulls actually destroy the, the Utah Jazz in game three. It was an embarrassing um, loss for Utah. Every single player on the Bulls team scored. And yeah, man, that was a phenomenal um, victory, a very dominant victory. And I think that game solidified the series in my eyes. You don't go down... Um, by 40 odd points and win the series but still the Utah Jazz are a hell of a team and I said it in the last episode and I've said it in this episode they are the best team to not win a championship in that Michael Jordan era you can talk about the Lakers you can talk about the Portland Trailblazers the New York Knicks the Detroit Pistons the Indiana Pacers the Boston Celtics all these teams that have come and gone in the Michael Jordan era for me the Utah Jazz is the best team to ever face the Michael Jordan's Bulls. I truly 100% believe that. Uh, and maybe besides the Pistons, because the Pistons were the only team that beat the Bulls, really. But let's be realistic. I think that I think the Jazz are the, are the best. And um, when they beat uh, the Utah Jazz and they went up 2-1, the training the next day, 
Funnily enough, and honestly, no one probably uh, was surprised, but Dennis Rodman was not at training. Where was Dennis Rodman? Now, I found this hilarious because as if you know me, you know me personally, you know some of the videos, if you've watched a lot of the videos on my channel, you know I'm a wrestling fan. So when I heard this, I died. Now, I don't know much about WCW. I know the main things I need to know. I know Dennis Rodman was on WCW, but the timing that he was on WCW, man, was hilarious to me. I couldn't believe he did practice to go to a WCW Nitro show and um, be part of the NWO. That was insane. I couldn't believe it. And wrestling back then was getting um, very bad public abuse for because it's 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 scripted. It's uh, fake fighting and all of this, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's a video for another day if you're a wrestling fan. But it was getting a lot of abuse at that time. A lot more abuse than it gets now. So everybody was not happy with Dennis Rodman. And the Bulls weren't happy with Dennis Rodman. But again, everybody expected this. Dennis Rodman is his own man. He does his own thing. And we all knew that when he was coming back to Game 4, he would be the best Dennis Rodman he can be. We all know that. So um, when he came back... He had a monster game. He was defensively amazing. He came back um, to, to completely um, destroy the Jazz. So ultimately, the Jazz win game five, and it goes to a game six. It goes back to Utah. The final two games are, being, are gonna take place in enemy territory for the Chicago Bulls, but they know that they are confident enough. They have two games to take it home, and they want to settle it, and they want to win that sixth championship. But there are some obvious obstacles in the way. Obviously, Karl Malone being an MVP type player, John Stockton being one of the best point guards to ever live. There's, it's a tough Utah Jazz team to beat. And it's very tough to beat when there's Scottie Pippen that was injured that game. He had a very bad sore back in game three. And then in game six, he ended up having a very, very um, bad reaction after going for a dunk so Scottie Pippen was in and out of that game and Michael Jordan being the player that he is he had to take the load he had to take all of the minutes he played nearly every minute that game and he was physically exhausted he couldn't survive that and um, it took a lot out of him but in doing that through the ups and downs and one of the closest games you'll ever see in an NBA Finals and one of the greatest games you'll ever see in the NBA Finals one of the most historic things happened the historic uh, turn of events happened. So obviously, um, MJ goes and gets an and one. That's the first thing that happened. He makes the free throw. And then the Jazz, I believe the Jazz are up by one at this point. And they go to Karl Malone. They always go to Karl Malone in the post with Dennis Rodman on him. But Michael Jordan was weak side. And that was something that wasn't going to be familiar for Karl Malone because uh, it just for the whole game, Michael Jordan was never a weak side. But he took a chance, MJ, and he got the steal. And with that steal, with time running out, no timeout being called, he runs to um, he runs to the, to his his spot and he tries to make a play. And he says in the interview, "I know I can either do one or two things. I can drive and get get to the paint, or I could take a mid range. I can jump over him. And it's all about which one I choose." And with the historic um, crossover, making uh, will. Uh, Russell fall, fall to, fall to the ground, he takes the shot, and it's called the shot for a reason, because he made that clutch shot to win the championship for the Chicago Bulls in game six. Now, people are arguing that it's a, a push-off, and in the documentary, they basically said that it wasn't a push-off, um, because his momentum was already going that way, and to be honest, uh, I'm not going to disagree with that. You, you, if you look at it, Look, look how committed he is to going into that direction. Even if Michael Jordan had his hand nowhere near it, even if the guy didn't fall, I still think he would never get to the shot that Michael Jordan was making. So regardless, I still think that's a very, very valid highlight. I don't think there was anything wrong with it, to be honest. But um, people still call it a push-off. At the end of the day, um, it, it is what it is. You could call it whatever you want. The fact is it won the championship and no one could take that away from the Bulls and, and, and Michael Jordan. And um, it went to, he won his sixth championship, man. And then the last dance has finally come to an end and they end it in the best possible way. They end it with their sixth ring, their sixth championship. 
three consecutive back-to-backs, and that's why Michael Jordan's the GOAT for me. Not only, it's not because he won six rings. If he won six rings in a row, he would be better than what he is today. But it's it's the consecutive three-peats that makes him the GOAT. If he won a ring, then lost a ring. Won a ring, then lost a ring. Won a ring, and then lost a ring. He did that his entire career. People can have their stakes, because at the end of the day, he lost just as much as he won. But the fact is, he's undefeated in the finals, and he went he went and won three championships, took a break for two years, and then went and won another three championships in a row. He three-peated twice. That's the that's the ultimate end or be all here. It's not that he won the six rings, it's how he won them. And I think people don't understand that. I think I think people just think, oh look, he had the best team. So of course he's going to um three-peat. There are very few teams that can three-peat. Very, very few. And those teams are considered the greatest teams of all time. They're the ones that, that can do it. And that's very inspiring. And it's very um, honoring to know that the Chicago Bulls are one of those teams. The team that I go for are one of those teams that have done it. They were the first ones to do it. So yeah, it's an incredible feat. And that's why he's considered the GOAT. And he said a lot of things. Um, obviously, there was, a, there was a little segment where Phil Jackson was offered to come back and to rebuild the team, to which I think everybody was in agreement that that wasn't going to happen. Phil Jackson wasn't coming back. Jerry Krause didn't want him to come back. And the rebuild was going to start. And it said at the very, very end that um, Michael Jordan went into retirement. That was his second phase of retirement. Uh, Phil Jackson uh, left the Chicago Bulls. Scotty Pippen got traded. Dennis Rodman got released. And all of this, and uh, yeah, and, and it is what it is, and that's how it ended. And Michael Jordan, he said, and this is this has hit me in the heart, his love and passion is always in the city of Chicago. The Ch- this is why Chicago have one of the greatest fans in the world, man. They have a loyal fan base, and a lot of that it started from Michael Jordan, and it's continued on because of the passion that they had, not just for Michael Jordan, for the entire team, for the Bulls dynasty, for the Bulls history. And this is why today, how often are we leading the league in attendance when we're bad? That that all comes from Michael Jordan and the passion he had for this franchise that gives other people to not give up on this franchise because if it wasn't for him, would we have the biggest fan base, one of the best fan bases in the world? Would people love the Chicago Bulls like they do now? No, they wouldn't. And that's, that's the thing that gets me the most. We, all of us stay loyal to this fan base because of what Michael Jordan did. Of course, there are other elements. You have other players that people stay loyal to as well. But Michael Jordan was the starter, the founder, and he created something that's lived on. And he said it at the very start. He wants to make Chicago a respectable city compared to the Celtics and the Lakers. And it started from a shitty team to one of the best teams, a dynasty team. And now people look at Chicago and they think, that's one of the best teams you could play for. And people, people, I believe people to this day, if they're playing for the Chicago Bulls, they're thinking this is one of the best organizations to play for. Because you have the history behind you, you have the fans behind you, you have everything that you could want in a team right there. And um, of course, things have changed now, but back then, that, that was an incredible feat. And yeah, and, and at the end, going into the next season, right before it, uh, they took off, they took, they wrote letters and they threw them into the fire, burning them with all of these emotional things. And it showed Michael Jordan really cared for his teammates a lot more than people give him credit for, which was phenomenal once again. And it went off into the sunset, six rings, the last dance is over. And that is going to be the end, not only of this episode, not only of this review, but of the last dance documentary. And what a ride it has been, man. And I, 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 when I first said I was going to do this, I didn't know how this was going to go. I didn't know that I would be any good at this. And to a lot of people, I'm still probably not the best at this at all. But I, I got to say, I'm so proud that I did this because as a Chicago Bulls fan, I can't neglect something that happens to our team, our franchise, past or present. And I'm happy that I did this. And I'm happy that people have responded to this as well. I think this series has the most views as in total than any of the other videos I've made. So I'm very proud that I did this. I'm very proud that people watched it. And I'm very happy and honored that I was able to 
uh, review such a great documentary in its prime, in its peak. As soon as the episodes came out, I made a review on it. And um, it was very hard, very tough journey, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my reviews and I encourage you all to please watch the documentary. If you get anything out of any of these videos, go watch the documentary. If you don't want to subscribe or like, the only thing I want you to actually like really, really, really do, well obviously subscribe, that's, that's, that's one. But what I really want you to do is Listen to this phrase right now. Please go watch the documentary. That's all I want you to do at this time because it was phenomenal, man. And what I talk about is so much more in that documentary. These are the things that I just felt were important and the things that I felt that um, was the best parts of the documentary. There are things in here that I probably didn't even mention or I briefly went over that was probably, if you watched it, would have been your favorite moment of the documentary. There is a lot that goes into this. I feel like everybody got their money's worth here. It was definitely a great watch. I'm looking forward to another documentary by the NBA in the future. Things like this are actually getting very popular. WWE are doing one now. I'm sure there's gonna be more to come and I'm looking forward to it. I would love to review more documentaries. So for as of for Mondays or Sundays for a lot of you guys, the Last Dance reviews will no longer be coming, but we still have The Last Ride from The Undertaker, which will take over Mondays from here on in. And until um, that ends, we've still got Monday reviews to go. So thank you all for watching this incredible journey. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, man. Turn notifications on and share the playlist. Please um, let me know what you think of the reviews. If they got better or worse over time, it's been a very long period. So it's, it took a lot of practice to try and actually get these to be at a decent level at best. So if things have gotten better over time, let me know. Or if things have gotten worse, let me know. I'd love feedback. And yeah, man, we're going to end this right. The last dance. Have a wonderful day. Take a bow for uh, a great Chicago Bulls team. Take care. Absolutely.